Procreate 5.4 Beta arrives with 144 new brushes, a recently updated Mixamo alternative hits the scene, and Substance Designer receives a massive render overhaul. Get pumped, it's Motion Mondays. Speaking of getting pumped, the new Donkey Kong Bonanza game's out, and I was so excited that I went and I created an AI video to celebrate using the latest groundbreaking text-to-3D model technology. Please enjoy. That's right, Procreate 5.4 Beta is out and the first impressions are rolling in. Brad Colbo's hands-on video covers all the new features and it's looking pretty solid. The big additions here are the new brush library system that lets you finally organize your brushes in a way that would make Marie Kondo proud. And you'll need it because they just added 144 new brushes that will hopefully spark joy. And it's really great because some of the new brushes actually leverage the new Apple Pencil Pro features like the barrel rotation, which is pretty awesome. And if you're a Procreate user, definitely check out Brad's video for the full breakdown. The new Procreate version should be rolling out to everyone in the next few months. And speaking of organization, because who actually has time to name layers properly? Newsflash, you do. You do, you lazy son of a gun. Name your layers for the love of the After Effects render error sheep. <laughs> but if you're looking for some help, AE Scripts and AE Plugins has this tool called Packer that automates the whole organization thing. So what Packer does is basically takes your mess of a comp and turns it into something resembling professional work. It's got two modes, the whole comp packing and selection packing, and the tool pre-comps everything, organizes it into folders, removes redundant or unused layers, and generally makes your project panel a little bit less of a nightmare to navigate. Now, individual users can name their own price, but if you're a business, you need to pay the suggested price for a valid license. Next up, Rive just dropped some major updates to their data binding features, and this is actually pretty huge for anyone doing interactive work. So what data binding is, is it basically creates a connection between your data and the user interface. And when the data changes, the UI elements will automatically automatically update. Now the new additions for binding include lists, images, and artboard. So lists let you create dynamic carousels and contact lists. Images can be dynamically swapped at runtime, perfect for avatars and product shots. But the artboards feature is where it gets really interesting. You can swap entire artboards at runtime, which means modular experiences with smaller file sizes. And this is huge for A-B testing and content personalization. And these features were in early access, but now they're available to everyone. So stay tuned too, because we're going to be dropping Rive Academy Volume 2 soon. Next up, our very own Blender instructor, Elijah Sheffield, just dropped part one of his four-part YouTube series called Character Design Lab, and it's looking pretty comprehensive. The first part walks you through the entire character modeling process in Blender, covering the project setup, blocking out your character, and all the essential modeling commands that you'll need to know. He's going with a medieval theme for this series, which gives him plenty of interesting characters and details to work with. And what I love about Elijah's teaching style is he doesn't just show you the buttons to press, he explains the thinking behind the process, and he sprinkles in a smart-ass joke or two to keep you entertained. So if you're interested in getting into character work inside of Blender, this is a perfect starting point. And if you want to dive deeper and jump into Blender, you should check out Elijah's full Blender for Motion Designers course that's available in our all-access curriculum. Giddy up. Now on to some school of motion news. First up, some YouTube programming notes. We just released a Cinema 4D Fluids tutorial featuring yours truly that runs through all the ins and outs of the new Cinema 4D Fluid Simulation System. And it's worth a peep if you're wanting to learn how to get that nice viscousy kind of fluid going on. And next we've got a very special edition of Motion Mondays where Joey is going to examine the state of AI in motion design. And the real question is whether it'll actually be Joey or just AI pretending to be Joey. Honestly, who knows at this point? Course-wise, we've got our two free courses available, plus we just released our Premier for Motion Designers course. We also got a smorgasbord of courses in production, including Rive Academy Volume 2 with Joey, a new After Effects course with Aron Stern, and an Unreal Engine for Broadcast course with Jonathan Winbush, and I'm working on a Substance Painter course as well. Now, another thing to keep in mind is our next portfolio review is July 24th. 
And we regularly have industry pros showing up at these workshops. So we have some heavy hitters lined up, including PJ Richardson from Laundry and Haley Atkins from Motion Hatch. And these are just some of the perks you can get only if you're part of our All Access membership. So if you wanna catch all these new courses and all the exclusive live events, head on over to our website to learn how to sign up for School of Motion All Access. Now, if you're wanting to throw some shade with some flair, grab this pack of 35 free Gobo textures from the awesome folks at the Pixel Lab. For the unfamiliar, Gobo stands for get one, buy one. I think that's right. Actually, it's a texture you add to lights to create interesting shadow patterns and textures. These are super useful for adding visual interest to your lighting setups without having to model complex geometry. So whether you're doing some product renders, character lighting, or you just wanna add some atmosphere to your scene, Gobos are one of those tools that can instantly make your lighting look a little bit more, you know, top end, classy. So to grab yours, head on over to thepixellab.net forward slash freebies and sign up for their newsletter. And you can see their massive collection of other free assets on their site too that you can grab right away. Next, Runway just introduced Act 2, their next generation motion capture model that supports head, face, body, and hand tracking. And all you need to do is use a driving performance video and a reference character. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna combine those two together to create these animations. It's half amazing and half creepy uncanny valley territory, which seems to be the theme with AI these days. Currently, it's only available to enterprise customers and creative partners, and it's not cheap. We're talking about five credits per second with a minimum of three seconds. Still, it's a sign that AI is kind of rapidly changing what's possible in animation, even if we're not quite sure where the heck this is all headed just yet. Keeping with the whole AI theme, YouTube just announced they're cracking down on mass-produced and repetitive videos, AKA AI slop. The new policies effective July 15th target inauthentic content, including mass-produced AI videos. They're trying to limit monetization for automatically generated content that viewers perceive as spam. Now the flip side of this, this is actually kind of good for motion designers. It could be a good opportunity because while heavily AI assistant content might get flagged, this policy shift means there's actually more room for authentic original content to stand out. And the key for YouTube is focusing on authenticity and originality to remain eligible for their YouTube partner program. It's YouTube's attempt to try to save us from the AI slop delusion. Honestly, we could probably use the help. Now it's time to highlight some great work from across the interwebs. First up is this awesome piece from the Cube Studio, who are also the team behind the Adult Swim series Common Side Effects. They created this slick Discord animation featuring the Wumpus character with the animation style heavily inspired by classic anime like Sailor Moon. The 2D cell animation is amazing. The transitions are just insane. And if you're into traditional animation, definitely follow more of their work at lecube.tv. Next is a piece Buck did for Coinbase using Cavalry, Cinema 4D, and Houdini to create this really cool ASCII art animation. They needed more control over the ASCII than traditional methods allowed, so they built a workflow combining 2D and 3D inputs to create a controllable ASCII setup influenced by dynamics and gravity. Buck just always continues to be absolutely insane at not only visuals, but technical problem solving as well. And finally, there's this thought-provoking piece Joey shared from Tom Guerra that comments on AI's growing power and asks the tough question, if anyone create anything, what are we here for anymore? He uses doors as an analogy for human connection and suggests that while many can generate doors, they're not all worth walking through. It's very heavy at the start, but ultimately, at the end, it gives you a renewed sense of purpose about why we do what we do. And I think it's important we remember the why of why we got into this in the first place. Real Illusion announced AccuRig 2, which is basically a Mixamo alternative that looks really promising. It builds on the current auto rigging functionality it had, but it adds the ability to apply animations from their actor core library to your rigged characters. Now, one thing that AccuRig 2 adds is group motion support for animations involving multiple characters, natural language search through their motion library, and export presets for pretty much every major DCC, Blender, Cinema 4D, Unreal Engine, you name it. Some animations are paid, but many are free, and the AccuRig software itself is free to download. And it's definitely worth checking out, especially if you need more power and 
More recent updates than uh, Mixamo provides. Substance 3D Designer just dropped version 15, and it's a pretty major update. The highlight is this new 3D renderer with rasterization and path tracing modes, replacing the older OpenGL and iRay renderers. You can really see the difference in quality. The new renderer just looks so much better. And they also brought back post effects and 3D scene import. So you can now import entire scenes with texture, lights, and cameras to edit materials in context. USD support means non-destructive exporting. Now one thing to note is the software subscriptions have increased in price just a little bit, but the new features look pretty solid if you're already in the Substance ecosystem. Now in a related story, a company called Abstract has released Instamat 2025, which is launching at a pretty interesting time considering Substance's price increases. Instamat is a texture painting and material creation tool that I think kind of aims to be a substance alternative, offering asset texturing, physically based terrain generation, advanced curve detailing, and cinematic viewport rendering with ray tracing. The software provides a pretty similar feature set to Substance, but at a more competitive price, I'd say. They have a Pioneer Edition that's free for artists making under $100,000 annually, and reasonable perpetual license tiers for everybody else. And they just added 250 new materials to their existing library of 100,000 PBR materials. It's definitely worth considering if you're looking for alternatives or you just wanna see what the competition's doing. It's gonna be available July 22nd. Now on to our student of the week who is Federico Pujo from Argentina who created this fantastic Eyes Go Here animation for Animation Bootcamp. And this exercise is all about creating eye trace and leading the viewer's attention to different parts of the screen. The animation has incredible energy and does such a great job of guiding your eye exactly where it needs to go on the screen. Federico is a freelance motion designer and his testimonial just kind of says it all. By the first week of Animation Bootcamp, he was already noticing a huge difference in his work. He went from having work that didn't look professional to feeling truly competitive in the market, and he became confident in his abilities. And this is exactly what we want to hear from our students. So awesome job, Frederico. And finally, two cool events just got announced. First up, Maxon's hosting the ZBrush Summit 2025 virtual edition, streaming live November 7th through 9th. They're celebrating ZBrush's 25th anniversary with live demos, tutorials, and a sneak peek at ZBrush beta features, which should be pretty cool. And the other event is Half Res on September 12th in Chicago. This is honestly one of the coolest events I've ever been to. You get to go to Chicago, hang out, eat a lot of the beefs, a lot of the pizzas. I'll be hosting the creative sessions portion of the event with presentations from awesome artists like Lucas Carmago, AKA Untitled Army, Casey Gu from Maxon, and our very own sweet boy, Elijah Sheffield. And be sure to use the code HALFRES2025 early bird for 20% off all ticket tiers while the early bird discount is active. So come out, hang out Friday, September 12th, Chicago. Hope to see you there. And that is it for this episode of Motion Mondays. Don't forget to check out my new Cinema 4D tutorial and you can watch my in-depth C4D Liquids Crash Course Workshop replay on our all access platform. And mark your calendars for our next course, Rive Academy Volume 2, coming next month. Have an awesome week and I'll catch you next time. I'm gonna go play some Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong.